How's it going everyone? Welcome back to the channel. The Lakers have been waiting patiently to complete their 15-man roster, and they likely will not mind waiting longer in order to maintain an open spot on their team for any high-profile players that unexpectedly become available, and oftentimes, that occurs when a player is bought out of their contract and then becomes available to sign with a new team. And although that is commonly referred to as the buyout market, which becomes very popular after the trade deadline in April, in reality, a player could get bought out of their contract at any point throughout the year. For example, we've seen that occur with Kemba Walker and the Oklahoma City Thunder only a couple of weeks ago. A contract buyout commonly occurs with veteran players who find themselves on a team that has altered their direction from trying to build a contending team to then trying to rebuild. Oftentimes, a rebuilding team will even take on the contract of a veteran player through a trade, only to then buy them out of that contract not that long after that. It mutually benefits both the team and the player by allowing the team to fill up their salary cap without actually having to give minutes to that player, which frees up more time for the younger players on their team to play. And then for the veteran player being bought out of the contract, it allows them to sign with a different team that is actually trying to win games and compete for a championship. It happens every year. And while you cannot fully predict when it might happen or who it may happen to, it is never a bad idea to keep an open spot on your team for a quality player that may unexpectedly become available through the buyout market. And in today's video, we'll be looking at 5 players who I believe the Lakers will be hoping to sign through the buyout market. And with all that being said, coming in at number 5, we got Al Farouk Aminu. While you might not have heard from Al Farouk Aminu in a while, he was a high quality player not that long ago. Injuries and playing for non-contending teams have made him a forgotten player, but he still has the ability to provide quality minutes to a playoff team. And he actually has the kind of skill set that a team like the Lakers might be looking for, especially if we are talking about their team right now. They currently do not have a lockdown defender who is big enough to guard the bigger wing players in the NBA. Trevor Ariza was able to do that at one time, but that probably would be asking a bit too much of him at this point in his career. Aminu, however, is still capable of filling that kind of role for a team. He is only 30 years old yet, and when healthy, he is capable of being regarded as a great defender. He is able to defend both smaller, perimeter-orientated players and bigger players who like to play down low. He has great height and length to go along with his mobility, which allows him to be a very versatile type of defender. He was even able to be regarded as a 3 and D player during his time in Portland. In the 4 years that he played there, he shot over 35% from the 3 point line while attempting 4 per game. When playing for a good team and allowed to get comfortable into his role, he is able to contribute on both ends of the court. He would be a sneaky good pickup through the buyout market if he were to become available. But now moving on to player number 4, where we have Rajon Rondo. If you watch my latest video, you'll know that I am in full support of bringing back Rondo to LA if he were to become available, and there are a couple of key reasons for that, with the first one being for more depth at point guard. If either one of LeBron or Westbrook were to ever get hurt, they would immediately become thin at point guard, because while they do have Kendrick Nunn to back them up, he has never been relied on to log heavy minutes at point guard. In Miami, he often played off the ball and took a heavy backseat to Jimmy Butler and Goran Dragic, who handled more point guard duties compared to him. Rondo would be able to provide them with a quality point guard who knows how to play with LeBron and Anthony Davis. No, he would not be relied on to play heavy minutes, but that is probably a good thing. Much like LeBron, Rondo tends to conserve his energy until the playoffs, but he can be valuable to them off the court too. He was already a good mentor to the young players on their team before he left, and he could resume that role once again. He would be very beneficial to helping the young guards on their team get better, and for Taylen Horton Tucker in particular. And between providing them with more depth and being a good mentor, I think he would be a luxury to have as their third point guard. But now moving on to bio candidate number 3, where we have Eric Gordon. The Rockets will likely spend a majority of the year trying to trade Eric Gordon, but I do not see any team taking on his contract given his injury history. They will likely end up buying him out of his contract, where he will then receive a ton of interest from contending teams. While Gordon is no longer the third scoring option that he once was, he can still be a valuable player to a contending team. And although the Lakers would not really have a need for him right now, if they end up dealing with any injuries or decide that they need to reconstruct their team a little bit, Gordon would become a possibility for them. 
and if there is one thing that they know he would be able to provide them with, it would be more offense. He is still only 32 years old, and when healthy, he is more than capable of putting up around 15 to 18 points per game. He is a high volume shooter and can score from anywhere on the court, and with that, he has already played with Westbrook before too. His game would likely translate well to playing behind and off of the Lakers' big three. Again, while they do not have a need for him right now, this would be a move to keep in mind for the future. You can never predict when injuries might happen, and because of that, you should always keep an open mind about who may become available through the bio market. But now moving on to bio candidate number 2, where we have Goran Dragic, another high quality veteran player who is currently stuck on a team that he does not want to be on, Dragic would be a great addition to any contender. And much like Eric Gordon, while the Lakers currently do not have a need for him right now, if they end up dealing with injuries and they believe they need more depth, Dragic will become a real possibility for them. While he could still very well end up being traded, as he does have a little bit of trade value, I still do not believe it will be easy to move his near $20 million contract. Dragic himself has dealt with injuries lately, and it may be hard to find a team willing to give up an asset for him in a trade because of that, and sooner or later, he could very well end up in the bio market. And whether or not they actually need him, I guarantee that the Lakers would be linked to him if he were to become available. They were rumored to be mutually interested in one another before Miami opted into his team option, and they very well could be interested in one another again. Like I mentioned before, you can never predict an injury or how players might fit well on the court together, so Dragic could become a possibility for them if things do not work out with their current team. But now moving on to bio candidate number 1, where we have Kevin Love. I'm sure many of you saw this one coming, but it would be impossible to make a bio candidate list without including Kevin Love. He has been very open about not wanting to be in Cleveland, and with him being practically untradeable at this point, he may finally get bought out of his contract. He would likely need to give some money back in order for that to happen, but I think at this point, he might be willing to do anything in order to get out of Cleveland, and if he is able to come to an agreement with Cleveland on a contract buyout, the first team that he will be linked to will likely be the Lakers, not only from popularity, but because it would actually make sense. Yeah, we all know about his friendship with LeBron and them playing together in the past, but the Lakers actually could use one more big. They are a bit thin at power forward, and it would be beneficial for them to add one more stretch forward to their team, who can play down low as well, and he would theoretically be a very good fit on the court with Anthony Davis. AD loves to play with the second big man on the court, who can help him dominate the rebound battle and bang down low, but at the same time, when they do play a second big man with him, they often lose the ability to space the floor. However, with Kevin Love, that would not be an issue. Love is a great 3 point shooter, and he could stand out on the 3 point line on offense while helping with rebounding on defense. And I know that it may seem like he is washed up at this point, but after watching Blake Griffin play last year, we can never be too quick to assume that anymore. Oftentimes, a change of scenery is all a veteran player needs in order to get back to playing at a high level, and I believe that would be the case with Kevin Love. In conclusion though, I believe that the Lakers will continue to monitor the bio market and will likely keep a spot on their team open in case of any unexpected players becoming available, and these 5 players are all candidates to eventually be bought out of their contracts and could very well be on the Lakers radar eventually. But what do you guys think? Do you believe that the Lakers will keep a spot on their team open for their potential to add a player through the buyout market? And if you do, who would you like to see them add through the buyout market eventually? Let me know your thoughts by commenting down below and we can talk about it there. That will do it for this video though. Thank you to everyone who took the time to watch until the end of the video. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please remember to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and turn on notifications to get notified right away when I drop a new video. And if you want to stay up to date on all my immediate thoughts and moves around the NBA, be sure to follow me on Twitter too. But as always, thank you for watching, and have a great day.